So if you have a vehicle and you think you have a bad oxygen sensor, I thought I'd go over the symptoms of a bad oxygen sensor, how you can tell if it is bad, how to find out which sensor has failed, since there is more than one, and how to replace it. And so first of all, what is an oxygen sensor? Well, the oxygen sensors are going to do two things. The first thing they do is they monitor the catalytic converter and they have heater elements built in that monitor the way the catalytic converter is heating up. And by reading this information, they could tell if the catalytic converter is working properly. And then the second thing they do is they monitor how much oxygen was burnt off during combustion. And the computer can use this information to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders. And so if there's a problem with one of these oxygen sensors, there's going to be some kind of issue inside of one of these things. And the O2 sensors can operate in what's called a closed loop or inside of what's called an open loop. And basically when it's in a closed loop, the computer's using the information from the O2 sensor to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture and the computer knows exactly what's going on with the engine. But if that O2 sensor goes bad, then it's not going to be able to read the information from the O2 sensor. So it's going to go into what's called an open loop, which basically means that it's just guessing what the air fuel ratio mixture should be going into the engine. And a vehicle will be in an open loop when it first starts up, but once it warms up, it should go into a closed loop. The computer is going to start reading the information from the O2 sensor and it's going to know the exact air fuel ratio mixture that should be going in to each cylinder. And so what are going to be some symptoms when an oxygen sensor goes bad? Well, first of all, you're very likely going to get a check engine light. The computer's going to see that it can't read that O2 sensor. And so it's going to give a code and it's going to turn on the check engine light. If you have a scan tool, you could check what the codes are and very likely you're going to get an O2 sensor code like a P0138 or a P0139. You might even get like a rich or lean code like a P0171 or a P0172 or something like that. But if you can scan the computer for any codes, then you're very likely going to get O2 sensor codes. If you don't have a scan tool, there's a lot of low cost OBD2 scan tools, some for less than like $20, $30. I'll put a link down below if you need one. You can also go to automotive stores. Quite often they'll come out and do a scan for free. But one of the main symptoms is that you'll get O2 sensor codes. Another symptom is that you'll get worse gas mileage than you usually do. And this is because the engine's not running as well as it could be. The computer's having to guess and use other sensors and things like this to know what the air fuel ratio mixture is to go into the engine. But another symptom is bad gas mileage. The engine might also have some kind of performance issues going on. When you go to step on the gas, it just doesn't go like it used to. It might stall out at certain times and different things like this. And again, this is because the computer's having to guess what the air fuel ratio mixture is. And depending on the vehicle, it might be trying to use other sensors to know what this is. But if there's any kind of sudden acceleration or sudden stops or something like this, then there's going to be a slight lag for the computer to catch up and try to adjust the air-fuel ratio mixture. Other symptoms is that you're going to fail an emissions test. You go down and get an emissions test, it's going to fail. When these sensors fail, you can also go into a lean condition or a rich condition, which basically means the air-fuel ratio mixture is off. If it's running in a rich condition, quite often you'll get black smoke out the exhaust. Another thing that happens sometimes is that there's like a rotten egg smell going on. And this is because sometimes the computer is dumping too much gas into the cylinders. And as that extra gas goes through the exhaust and through the catalytic converter and things like this, it could cause a rotten egg smell. And so how would you tell if an O2 sensor has gone bad? Well, there's two ways you can check to see if the O2 sensor has gone bad. You can use an OBD2 scan tool or you can use a multimeter. And there can be some differences on the wiring going to the sensor, depending on the year, the make, different things like this. There can be one wire. There can be three wire ones. And the most common is going to be like this where there's four wires. And basically what's going on with these is that the same two color wires, for example, right here, the two black wires, those are going to be for the heater element that's in there that's monitoring the catalytic converter. And that heater element that's built inside of there is kind of like a light bulb. If it burns out, it just doesn't work no more. And so to test that heater element, you basically could just test it for continuity. You set your meter to ohms and you just check to see if it's burnt out. You can't check to see what the specifications are for it, what the rated ohms are. But usually if it's not burnt out and you're getting some kind of reading, then that means that side of the sensor is good. The other two wires are going to be going to the oxygen sensor side of that sensor. And to test these, it's going to depend on which sensor you're reading. The sensor located before the catalytic converter is going to be called sensor one or the upstream oxygen sensor. And the sensor located after the catalytic converter or right on it is going to be called sensor two or the downstream oxygen sensor. The main sensor to focus on would be the sensor one upstream oxygen sensor. And since it's the main one the computer's looking at, although that second one can also fail, and so basically to test this sensor one upstream oxygen sensor, you use a scan tool and you find the live data section or the data stream section, however it's labeled. And right here you see bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor. And this is going to give you the voltage that it's going up and down inside of. And it should be changing constantly. It should be ranging. It should go down to like 0.01 volts or somewhere near it. And then go up to like 0.08 or 0.09 and then come back down inside the steady pattern like this. If that sensor one is just flat and it's not going up and down like this, 
or it's not reading anything, then that means that it's bad. You can also use a multimeter just to get a general idea if it's gone bad. And so basically with the multimeter, you would check the two mismatch wires because those would be for the oxygen sensor side. And the meter's not really going to be able to track the jumping around that that O2 sensor is doing. But as long as it is jumping around, then that usually means that it's good. If that voltage is flat and it's not doing anything, then you know it's bad. And so while it is better to use a scan tool, you can use a multimeter to test these. I made some more detailed videos on how you go about doing this. I'll put a link down below if you need that. But that's the basics of how you go about telling if an O2 sensor is bad. And so if you do use it like a scan tool or, and you think you have a bad sensor and you want to replace it and you need to locate it and things like this, how would you go about doing that? Well, it's basically right inside the code. So right here, this is going to say bank one, sensor two. If you have a V6 or V8 engine, you're going to have two banks. Bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. And then the opposite of that would be bank two. So if you find the number one cylinder on your engine, you can Google it and look up diagrams or firing orders or things like this. You find the number one cylinder on your engine, then that's going to be bank one. And then the opposite of that would be bank two. If you have a four cylinder engine, it wouldn't matter. You're only going to have one bank. It can be a good idea to get a diagram for your specific vehicle. It'll make it easier to find where all the sensors are located. For example, here's a 2007 Camry with a 3.5 liter V6. And as you can see, this has 402 sensors. This is bank two, sensor one, bank two, sensor two, and bank one, sensor two is right here. But basically to locate that sensor, it's just right inside the code. So right here, that would be bank one, sensor two. You go to that bank one side and you go down and sensor two will be the second sensor or the one right after the catalytic converter and sometimes right on it. And so how do you replace one of these sensors? Well, they're fairly straightforward to replace. You basically need to unscrew them and screw in the new ones. Before you decide to replace it, it can be a good idea to go examine it and check it out because sometimes, depending on the environment, they can get rusted up on there or there can be a lot of corrosion. And as that happens, it can be difficult to remove. Quite often, you need a torch to remove them. But usually it's fairly simple to unscrew them and screw in a new one. Sometimes they can't be in bad locations and they can't be recessed into the exhaust or something like this. And when they're like this, you need a special tool to get them back in and get around that wire. There's some special tools and sockets that'll let you put it back in and get around that wire. So it's a good idea to go check out that sensor and see if it is like this. I'll put a link down below to one of these special tools if you need to check that out. If it's out in the open, usually you could just use a wrench, like a 22 millimeter. You could just take off the old one and put on the new one. But again, go check it out. Be sure that it doesn't look like it's all rusted up or corroded and that it's not recessed down into the exhaust. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to go over the symptoms of a bad oxygen sensor, how you could tell if it's bad, and how you go about replacing it. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like. Please click subscribe. And have a good day.